Have you ever had patients tell you that coming off of their antidepressants feels awful? Maybe they describe bad GI symptoms like nausea, diarrhea, or constipation. Or perhaps they mention headaches, like the kind you get when you try to stop using caffeine. Some people might even describe more unusual sensations, like zaps of electricity running down their spine. For years, we've known that many of our patients do struggle to come off of their medications or have difficulty tolerating a cross taper but we haven't had a sense of the exact frequency of these symptoms. A 2019 study, relying partly on survey data, estimated that more than half of patients may suffer discontinuation symptoms, with a quarter of patients suffering from severe symptoms, but those results have been questioned given the methodology. According to a new systematic review and meta-analysis published in Lancet Psychiatry, about one in seven patients may experience symptoms associated with antidepressant discontinuation. I'm Scott Beach, and this is Quick Takes. The article analyzed 79 studies involving more than 21,000 participants, about 16,500 of whom had discontinued an antidepressant. About 17% of patients had symptoms that were attributable to their own expectations about stopping medications, but even after accounting for this phenomenon, about 14% of all patients reported symptoms. That's not an insignificant amount, but it's still a minority and way less than the 50% estimated by the 2019 study. Still, about 3% of patients, or 1 in 35, had symptoms that were considered severe. Interestingly, the frequency of symptoms did not seem to have any relationship to whether the medication was abruptly stopped or slowly tapered. This is really notable, as most guidelines recommend tapering as a means to reduce discontinuation symptoms. It's important to understand the limits of this study, though, in terms of this particular finding. Basically, the meta-analysis found no difference in discontinuation rates between studies that involved abrupt discontinuation and those involving slow tapering, but there was no head-to-head -head comparison of the two approaches in most individual studies. So we can't really say that these findings suggest that prescribers shouldn't use a cautious taper, and many still believe that very slow tapers can completely mitigate the risk of withdrawal symptoms. On the other hand, so-called hyperbolic tapering, or very slow tapers over prolonged periods of time, have been criticized because they are often practically challenging and because only a minority of patients will experience discontinuation symptoms in the first place. Among antidepressants, imipramine, desvenlafaxine, venlafaxine, and escitalopram were associated with higher rates of discontinuation symptoms. A similar group of antidepressants, imipramine, desvenlafaxine, venlafaxine, and paroxetine, were associated with more severe symptoms. Most of these are not surprising. Paroxetine, for example, is perhaps the most notoriously associated with this phenomenon, probably due to its very short half-life. So the fact that it causes more severe discontinuation symptoms basically confirms prior teaching. Immediate release venlafaxine is similar in this regard, and since the analysis didn't separate the formulations of individual agents, it's also not really surprising to see that one on the list. I was a little surprised to see escitalopram there, and in fact, in a prior 2023 review that attempted to risk stratify antidepressants, escitalopram was grouped into the moderate category in terms of frequency of withdrawal symptoms. So that is perhaps the most novel conclusion in terms of individual agents that might be worse. On the opposite end of the spectrum, sertraline and fluoxetine were among the antidepressants with the lowest rates of discontinuation symptoms in the study which again confirms prior data. The authors do emphasize that all data with regards to individual agents should be interpreted as preliminary because of steady heterogeneity. Additionally, this meta-analysis did not include any studies involving bupropion, mirtazapine, or amitriptyline, so we can't really draw any conclusions regarding discontinuation symptoms with those agents. One thing that the study didn't examine was the time frame of withdrawal symptoms. Most guidelines refer to the duration of antidepressant discontinuation symptoms as being one to two weeks, but the authors point out that many patients will suffer from symptoms far beyond that time frame. 
It can also be extremely challenging to detect symptoms, given that many are nonspecific and can resemble symptoms that might indicate worsening of depression in the setting of stopping an antidepressant, like insomnia and irritability. So what do you do if your patients report experiencing symptoms that could be attributed to antidepressant discontinuation? Well, the first thing would be to try to better understand the symptoms and make sure that they seem consistent with this phenomenon and don't have a better explanation. If they seem legit, one strategy would be to employ that hyperbolic tapering I mentioned earlier by restoring to the original or approximate dose of the antidepressant and then beginning a very slow taper, usually over several weeks and sometimes over months. Some patients will tolerate this approach better. Another strategy, particularly with SSRI discontinuation symptoms, is to switch to a different SSRI. For example, if you have a patient on paroxetine, rather than attempting a very prolonged taper of that agent, you might make a direct switch to something like fluoxetine, which again has a much longer half-life, maintain that for a week or two, and then either do a quick taper or just discontinue it and let it auto-taper. Most patients will tolerate the auto-taper of fluoxetine much better than a quick taper of paroxetine. Finally, keep in mind that if you are transitioning antidepressants rather than stopping antidepressants completely, you may be able to do a cross-taper to the new agent in a way that mitigates a lot of discontinuation symptoms. <music> 